Hey, and welcome back to the channel. Today, I will show you how to solve climbing stairs interview question. This question has been mostly asked by Amazon, but it also asked by various other companies like so. We will use JavaScript and explore two different solutions for this problem. But before we continue, make sure to like, subscribe to the channel and comment below and give me a feedback. It's highly encouraged and appreciated as always. Now, without further ado, let's dive in. Here comes the problem. You are climbing a staircase. It takes n steps to reach to the top. Each time you can either climb one or two steps. In how many distinct ways can you climb to the top? Let's see some examples. Here is the first example. We have n of two and we only allow to take one step or two steps at a time. So it will leave us with two possible solutions. Second example, we have n as three. We only allow to take one or two step at a time again. It will leave us with three possible solutions. So let's see how we are going to solve this problem. Since our examples were a bit simple, I'll take you to a journey of exploring n of five in order to just clarify some stuff for you. You. So like examples, we will walk through all possible ways of climbing. Also remember that we are only allowed to take either one or two steps at a time. I'll introduce you two points of views here. Firstly, try to think about breaking this problem down into smaller pieces. In order to get into step five, we need to get into step four. And for that, we need to get into step three and so on until we reach into the ground level of zero. Secondly, I want you to start from smaller pieces to get into the large one. Let's say we have one stairs. That is obvious that we could only take one step here. What about two? We will have two solutions. One one will be taking one step at a time and second we will going to have two steps at once so we will have two possible ways one and one or just only two now for three let's think in a reverse order if we already are in the stair tree we would have reached in there by either of two ways first scenario is we were at stair two and continued one more step. Second scenario is we were at stair one and jumped off two stairs. Since we are already know that one stair has one possible solution and two stairs has two possible solution, the idea here is we can sum those previous ways in order to get all possible ways for current stair. I'll explain why in a second. That would mean if we were at stair one and wanted to get into stair three, there's two possible ways for us to reach into the third stair because we already have two stairs in front of us and if we were at the stair two and wanted to get into stair three there will be only one possible way to reach in three that will leave us with three possible ways in order to reach into stair three in case of four again if we stand in stair four there's only two possible ways that we could have ended up there either we were at the stair three and took one step to get into stair four or we were at the stair two and took two steps using our magic idea of combining last two possible ways to get into our answer we already know that there are two ways to get into stair two and there are three ways to get into stair three so it would leave us with five possible ways in order to get into stair four one last time for five there are two possible ways that we can end up at five either we were at the stair four and took one step or we were at stair three and took two step at once. Based on the magic rule of adding last two possible ways, we know that there are three ways to get into stair three and there are five ways to get into four. So five plus three equals eight possible way to reach into stair number five. But hang on here, there must be a big why in your mind about why we need to add up possible ways for last two stairs in order to get possible ways to reach into our current stair. This magic trick has to be explained. Let's discover it in a simpler way. Let's imagine our last example five stairs. I said that we need to check two steps before step four and step three. But I need to explore how we can get from step four and three 
to five in more detail for you. We had five possible ways to get into step four. On the other hand, we had three possible ways to reach into step three. In order to get from four to five, we basically need to add one to each of those solutions. But from three to five, we need to add two steps. I want to draw your attention here that we already know that this two here is not just as simple. Adding two means actually two possible ways. One is just jumping two steps like like the one that we have here or two steps at a time so now we literally have five possible ways from four to five and six possible ways from three to five but the magic is exactly here now we can clearly see that some of the possible ways from three to five is overlapping with four to five in reality we have 11 possible ways for both three and four added up together but we will ignore duplicate passes here so this is the reason why we add up the result of n negative one step with n negative two step all the time because no matter what step counts is we are 100% sure if we add them up and skip the duplicates we will get all possible ways into n steps finally our strategy here is we will define our base cases for one and two because they are super obvious to us then we will have n amount of iteration in each step and whenever we try to find possible ways for that new step we will just look into the hash map and add up those previous values this is the gist of what we are going to do then we will improve this solution with a hint let's jump into the code so here we are in lead code. First, we need to define our base cases. We know that if we have one stair, there is one possible way. And if we have two stairs, there are two possible ways. So we will do if n is less than or equal to two, return n itself. Then we need to create our hash map in order to store possible ways for each stairs. Let's call it bucket. Let bucket is equal to an empty object. Now, after that, we will rely on results of last one and two stairs. But for three itself, we need to know how many possible ways exist for two previous ones, right? Stair one and two. So it will be bucket at index one, one possible way, and bucket at index two, two possible ways. For anything above three, we will rely on the solution that I explained. That means our i in the iteration that I'm about to write will be three because we already hard coded one and two in here so i will do four let i equal to three i less than equal to n and i plus plus finally inside of our for loop we will do the possible ways for index i is going to be the sum of ways of two last previous steps so i will do bucket at index i negative one plus bucket at index i negative two and finally we will do return bucket at index n because we already calculated that n step inside of our iteration in here so if i run this everything is passing and if i submit we are in a good shape here but there is a bottleneck here or hash map we know that we will have o of n space complexity because of that hash map since for every given step we store its possible ways to get into that step in a key value manner so this hash map will grow as much as n, which we don't like because it will increase our space complexity here. So how we can improve this? I want you to think a bit of this pattern here. Have you noticed something really minor here? In order to find possible ways to get into n stairs, we need to add up the results of previous stair with two steps before. Doesn't this sound familiar to you? Yes, you are right. This is the Fibonacci with one little difference that this series of numbers is not going to start with double ones. It will start with normal sequence of numbers and the initial two numbers are one and two. So that means we can tweak Fibonacci solution a bit here in order to remove a requirement for hash map and have a constant space complexity let me show you how so in order to get rid of our hash map we will leverage the exact concept that we talked in the slides using one step and two step behind values but before that we are still going to need to check for first and second stairs so we will do if n less than or equal to 2 we are going to return n itself just note that by doing so we already covered the cases for stair number 1 and 2 here From 
from now on whatever code we are about to write is for stair 3 and above so in order to calculate the possible ways for 3 we still going to need to know the results for 2 and 1 and we know that they are super obvious so I'll start by defining variables as solid as these one step before 3 was let one step before was 2 and two steps before 3 was let two steps before was 1 we are going to have a total ways initially as 0 let total ways equal to 0 then or for loop or let i equal 3 i less than equal to n i plus plus now time for summing up the results of last two steps together i'll create a descriptive variable for it something like let possible ways for current step is going to be one step before plus two steps before now here's the important part since we just calculated possible ways for current step for i in this case let's say i is 3 we need to update our previous two steps we cannot go into next iteration in loop and still have one step before as 2 and two step before as 1 those values belong to 3 not for our next iteration where we have 4 so we need to update them. First, we will start with two steps before. Two steps before is going to be one step before and then one step before is going to be possible phase or current step. If we were leaving step three in iteration and entering to step four, one step before is going to be the whatever we just calculated. Lastly, we need to assign possible ways for current step to the total ways in order to update that and at the end we will return it. So we will do total ways is going to be possible ways for current step and return total ways and now if I run this everything is passing and if I submit we have a constant space solution here for time complexity, we will have all of n for both solutions where n is the length of our stairs and we are doing a loop as long as our stairs count. For space complexity, it will be all of n space complexity for hash map solution because as I said, our hash map will grow as much as stairs count and it will be all of 1 constant space complexity for the one that inspired by Fibonacci concept. And with that, I can say that was it for this video. Also, make sure to check out my playlist about dynamic programming as well where we discover similar problems from lead code that you may be interested in i'll put the link in the description for you thank you so much for watching this video and please like comment and subscribe to the channel and finally hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for the next one